As we wrap up 2022, we take a look back. In many ways, our life got back to normal after the pandemic, but we also had to contend with new headaches of inflation, staffing shortages, and supply chain issues. Here's a look at 2022. Last time I came here was before Christmas. Usually when we came in the morning, there wouldn't be a line, but when we came out, there would be a line. And I was like, okay, we gotta be there at nine. 2022 dawned with a COVID spike. The holidays pushed COVID-19 testing centers like the one here at the Starlight Center in Brooklyn Park to the max. Crazy, super long. January is also when you couldn't find at-home COVID tests, with stores selling out as soon as shipments came in. Now, Shannon, here in my hand is one of the hottest things on the market, a COVID-19 at-home testing kit. The pandemic also continued to put the crunch on businesses. Little Folks Daycare in Crystal is among several businesses that had to cope with staffing shortages. Child care is already a challenge and now we have a new challenge this week. Schools struggled too with staff absences and COVID numbers climbing up. We're just exhausted and unfortunately some, some people are questioning how long they're going to be able to continue at this pace. This prompting schools to shift back briefly to distance learning. There we go, guys. It took longer to get things to in 2022. In New Hope, Jules Cave Diner closed because of staff and supply chain shortages. We made it through COVID. Um, it's just now to the point where you can't find half the stuff that we need. Len Bush Roses in Plymouth struggled with the supply chain and labor shortage right at their busiest time of year, Valentine's Day. It's remembering that that's our focus. And it's really key to help keep our spirits up during stressful times. Mask policies became an even hotter topic at school board meetings and in public spaces, with each entity passing policies that were sure not to please everyone. By midsummer, most of those policies were no longer in place. However, there were much happier feelings associated with weddings and events as venues were scheduled for a fuller than full season. All of the weddings that have been postponed for the past two years that are all coming to fruition now, plus the new ones of people that are getting married. You got a friend in me. I think we're at the point now where people are really ready. They want to get married. There is an increase in traffic in that regard. By late spring, we began hearing the word inflation more often as customers started paying more for groceries and gas. Parents couldn't find formula for their children. It's really scary um, when I walk into Target and there's nothing there. Cities also had to pay more than budgeted for equipment and projects as prices went up. A couple of examples are IT equipment. Not only are prices going up, but I think most significantly there are greater and greater delays in just getting what we need. Homes became tougher to find, too, particularly homes under $500,000. It's very competitive, so this is not, this market's not for the faint-hearted. But as the year progressed, we started seeing life return to what it was before the pandemic. The Brooklyn Park Lions Club smelt fry came back, and Hennepin Tech's annual plant sale came back, too. You get to come in and talk to people that are just as excited about plants as we are. Inflation continues to make headlines as prices continue to remain high. Nonprofits continue to report unprecedented need. We are down um, on an average 42,000 pounds of food each month in donations. So we're seeing a big dip in donations. Uh, new families are doubling. So it, it's, it's very real right now. Families are struggling to make ends meet because of inflation. Consumer prices are really high. And that's true for us too, because we've had to buy more food than ever before to provide to our partners and to the community. A Brooklyn Park man is hoping to make a difference through an online tutoring platform that he built for youth. CCX News reporter Sarah Tamer introduces us to him. Conda Coach Learning is a coding platform that we started back in uh, 2018. And our goal was to originally teach uh, 100,000 or more students how to code. Clifton Mana knows from experience equitable education is essential. The concept came up, uh, you know, just growing up in a community where there's a lot of chaos, you know, we didn't have access to resources, you know, mentorships and things of that nature and stuff. It's why the Brooklyn Park entrepreneur started Conduct Coach Learning. There's actually a huge demand for this. An online coding platform now offering all subject tutoring. The concept came about early March of 2022. A parent reached out to me like, OK, I see that you guys are teaching students how to code and stuff. Uh, but there is there any possibility that, you know, you can teach my son math 
and reading. Uh, he's currently struggling within these specific areas. Demand fueled the idea, but Mana credits his mother for his passion. She grew up in a, a native, traditional West African uh, home uh, back in uh, Monrovia, Liberia. When we moved here in early 1999 and stuff, she took this idea of perfecting her craft and cooking and she started a community-based uh, organic restaurant and through there I got my early introductions into entrepreneurship. Mana is hoping the platform will inspire youth to pursue careers in technology while simultaneously helping to bridge the education gap. To provide affordable, all subject and quality tutoring to all students of all race, background and ethnicity. What ultimately are you hoping to accomplish with this website? Uh, our goal is, you know, to reach the masses, uh, honestly to reach the masses. We see, again, we see like there's a definite need for this. In Brooklyn Park, Sarah Tamer, CCX News. We will leave you on this New Year's weekend with a look at a beautiful sight in our area. This is sea smoke coming off the water at the Coon Rapids Dam. Sea smoke is essentially fog above the water. Happy New Year's Day, everyone. did not finish the season undefeated as they had in 2021. The Whites out of volleyball team was still the best team in the state, winning Class 4A again. The Trojans are one of the local teams with players represented on the 2022 CCX All-Area Volleyball Team. We start our 2022 CCX All-Area Volleyball Team with a generational talent at setter and Wyzetta junior number 10, Stella Swenson. Swenson out to Swenson, down the line and good. The Star Tribune Metro Player of the Year racked up 888 set assists for the state class 4A champion Trojans. Jesuits lays out Stella Swenson. Oh, what a play. First team All-State player also recorded 138 kills, 74 blocks, and 49 ace serves. Champlain Park center number three, Reese Axness also makes our team. Sophomore finished the year with 894 set assists, 259 digs, and 39 aces for the Section 5 4A runner up Rebel. Ooh, that was a tough serve from that. Maple Grove's number 13, Liesl Hogan, had a good senior season at La Barrel for the Crimson. Hogan finished her season with 422 digs and was second on the team in aces. She'll play next year at Northern Michigan University. Wyzetta Libero number three, Sophia Johnson was an outstanding defensive player and passer for the state champion Trojan. Johnson had just 21 reception errors on 424 attempts. And that one's in. The University of California commit was named second team all Metro and was all state. Our hitters include Wyzetta junior outside number 25, Olivia Swenson. An all Lake conference and first team all Metro selection, Swenson led the Trojans with 352 kills and a 260 hitting efficiency. Swenson also finished with 186 digs and was the Coaches Association All-State pick. Side to Swenson, there it is! Wyzetta wins another state title! Champlain Park's number seven, Carly Gilk, was a great right side hitter for the 24 and six Rebel. That's just a Gilk, my goodness. The All-Conference, All-Metro, and All-State sophomore finished the season with 332 kills, 41 aces, 234 digs, 0.291 hitting for seven. Found the line for the point. Maple Grove right side number 11, Audrey Waterman led the Crimson in hitting percentage at 285. Finished second on the team with 226 kills. Maple Grove will win set number three. Maple Grove finished the season with 19 wins. Number 15, Amaya Jennings was a bright spot for Hopkins this fall. And great attack by Jennings. Junior led the Royals in kills and was an all late conference selection. Good serve and I'll go as an ace. Champlain Park's number 10, Marley Hansen, was an impactful player for the Rebels this season. Back to back kills. The senior outside hitter totaled 276 kills, 224 digs, and a 247 hitting percentage. 
chance and was all Northwest Suburban Conference and second team all Metro. But Ill St. Margaret's number 10, Lily Eigner, helped lead the Red Knights to their first state tournament in almost 40 years. The senior outside racked up 338 kills, 221 digs, and 58 aces for the Red Knights. The team's most valuable player, Eigner, will play next year at Holy Cross. Our team also includes an outstanding middle hitter in Wysetta's number 27, Katie Kelsenberg. We're back in the middle. There's the kill for Kelsenberg. The sophomore was a consistent player all season for the Trojans. The all Lake Conference pick finished with 165 kills and 77 blocks and was named to the all-tournament team at state. And that's our team. And these players were solid as well in 2022. Here are the honorable mention selections for volleyball. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.